The Goon Squad brothers have quickly become one of my favorite YouTubers on the platform. If you have even the slightest interest in cars or fixing things, then I'm sure YouTube has put them on your homepage. Crazy enough, watching their videos is what gave me the confidence to start working on my own cars. However, what I find most fascinating about the Goon Squad brothers is their growth and business mindset on YouTube. They're averaging over half a million views a day and have implemented numerous revenue streams throughout their channel. As you know, YouTube videos on how to fix your car is nothing new to the platform, and auto mechanics has been around for years. So how come the Goon Squad brothers who simply post videos working on their cars be blowing up so fast and making millions of dollars while at it? Maybe they know something the rest of us don't about finance and entrepreneurship. In this video, we're going to break down the Goon Squad brothers' success story and figure out how they went from being broke teenagers just a few years ago to absolutely dominating the YouTube car niche and making millions of dollars at the same time. Not only that, I'll also be highlighting any important traits or business strategies we see the Goon Squad brothers use throughout the breakdown of their story. And trust me, there's a lot. So if you're interested in starting your own business, becoming an entrepreneur, or even blowing up on YouTube, then make sure to have a pen and paper ready as we dive right into their story. To start, the Goon Squad brothers' actual names are Simon and Alizar, something they tend to keep pretty private. I just thought, you know, you should know that. Anyways, if we scroll all the way back to their first videos posted on their channel, you'll quickly figure out how they came up with their YouTube channel name. Goon Squad is simply them acting like goons on quads, just abbreviated. And if we take a closer look though at these early videos, we can also learn that they had a fascination for working on things with motors. They love tinkering with anything that had an engine. Finally removed the, the bracket, the bushing holding bracket and consistently posting videos on replacing axles, painting rims, replacing clutches, and even installing lift kits on their trucks. There was no strategy to their uploads, and I can bet at the time they had no intention of even becoming YouTubers. They were simply recording and posting anything and everything on their channel just to show people how much fun they were having. Now this is honestly the best method to start on YouTube too. This is because most YouTubers experience a burnout, usually if they attempt to become YouTubers with the sole purpose just to make money. It's the YouTubers that start making videos just for fun that can grow exponentially, and this is because it never really feels like work. Now, it wasn't until they purchased their next hobby, a wrecked 2013 Jeep Rubicon, off an insurance auction when they realized how powerful YouTube could be. They uploaded a video titled Rebuilding a Wrecked Car, Jeep Rubicon Part 1, and almost immediately the video started to blow up. They even noticed other people were copying their title. This video had hundreds of thousands of views in just a few days, and it was something about the keyword rebuilding and the series style videos such as part one, part two, part three, part four, that is extremely attractive to the YouTube platform. It is just so unique and the brothers somehow were able to pick up on that. Notice the structure of their content immediately changed after figuring this out. No longer were they posting random titles and videos. Each one now had a little more thought put into it than the last. And this is called the blue ocean strategy. This means they were able to differentiate themselves from their competition by opening up an entirely new market space and creating new demand. The brothers were able to create and capture an uncontested space within the car niche on YouTube, making videos on rebuilding cars in series, thereby making their competition in the space irrelevant. Prior to them, not many people were really posting videos on going to Copart and auctions taking cars. Now, as we know, making how-to videos on YouTube is nothing new. Auto mechanics is also nothing new, but creating a series showing that process of buying those salvage cars from auction and rebuilding it was just something that YouTube has never really seen before, especially by two teenagers. They continued their Jeep rebuilding series and this allowed them to build quite the following. People became addicted to the series and the best part was the evergreen style videos could stay relevant no matter what time you watched it. And what I mean is that this type of content could stay relevant for years and not go out of date quickly. It was also a way to get people to watch multiple videos on their channel because people would want to know what happened next. Each video was slowly bringing in more and more views and more and more subscribers than the last. Unfortunately, even with the new influx in views and subs, it just wasn't anything for them to pursue full time. They were making nothing off YouTube, but this didn't really deter them from at least trying. I mean, after that video, we kind of started doing some house stuff. I know a lot of people probably remember the house stuff we were doing, like the we did lightning house. Yeah, because we're just trying to make a living while doing this YouTube because like YouTube wasn't paying, like we weren't making money. 
company. With this newfound knowledge on what trends on YouTube, they would continue to upload videos as a series. You can see them continuing this with their Jeep series and testing this out on their house demolition and remodeling videos. This was also a way for them to make a living filming their jobs while also pursuing YouTube. And you can see this in their series called Remodeling a House Struck by Lightning. Their older brother Alex had purchased the house to flip and offered to pay them to fix it up. Take a moment to realize that from an early age, they were surrounded by entrepreneurs. Even their older brother was into hustling and working for himself. So it's no surprise that some of his knowledge and hustle rubbed off onto them. I'm also sure they learned how to work hard from their immigrant parents who came from Ukraine. Now in business, there is a saying that you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. And what that means is the people you spend the most time with shape who you are. They determine what conversations dominate your attention. They affect which attitudes and behaviors you are regularly exposed to. And you eventually start to think like they think and behave like they behave. So if you want to be successful, then be around successful people. If you hang around nine millionaires, you are bound to be the 10th. The brothers continued their Jeep rebuilding series until it was finally rebuilt. And they quickly realized that if they want to continue this trend, then they would need to purchase another salvaged car because their rebuilt one was no longer entertaining. Sticking with their already popular series, they bought another Jeep Rubicon. And it wasn't until this Jeep was finished that they started to branch out, moving up from the Jeep to a Ford F-250, a Subaru WRX, and eventually a wrecked Mustang GT, which really blew up their channel, raking in over a million views per video. Their builds not only were progressively getting harder, but the cars were getting more and more popular, combining the rebuild keyword with the series style videos and consistently upgrading their cars played a massive role in pulling an audience from almost all age groups and demographics. Notice they picked cars that had huge communities. Jeep has a huge community of diehard followers, and so does the Ford pickup truck, the Subaru WRX, and even the Mustang. It was around this time they decided to pursue YouTube full-time as a career. They asked their brother Alex, who, as we know, is in the home construction business, if he wanted to be a part of the channel, but unfortunately he declined, which is a shame because the brothers have mentioned several times in their videos that he's into cars. However, he did loan them $50,000 to purchase the C7Z06 just as their channel was in the initial growth stage. Now the C7 being as popular as it is, helped them maintain their consistent 1 million plus view videos, which eventually led into builds like the Hellcat, the Dodge Viper, Porsche, Nissan GTR, Lamborghini Huracan, Ferrari, and many, many, many more. They have even started to bring back some of their older home construction hobbies in their new videos, building their own headquarters, their home, and even garage. This is also a way for them to spread their wealth and not have all their money tied up in one place, not having all their eggs in one basket. Flash forward to today, and they have amassed a following of over 2.5 million subscribers and over 750 million views to their channel. Now, if we use a YouTube revenue calculator like Social Blade, it can give us a pretty good estimate on how much they're actually earning. Now, Social Blade is pretty accurate in regards to views and subscriber growth, but they aren't that great in determining what a YouTuber's revenue is. And as I've mentioned in previous videos, each niche has its own CPM, which is how much a YouTuber earns per thousand views. Now, if we check out my previous video on how Matt Armstrong became a millionaire, we can see that car niches earn roughly $4 to $5 per thousand views, which we found out by looking at other content creators in the space. Now, if you guys want to check out this video, then make sure to click the link in the description or click right over here. Now, using the $4.50 to $5, we can see that the Goon Squad channel just off YouTube revenue alone is bringing in around half a million dollars a year. And if we do the math, since their channel brought in a total of 750 million views, that divided by a thousand times five is almost $4 million. But no one knows for sure unless they reveal their earnings. Let's also not forget about their other revenue streams they've implemented into their channel, which consists of their clothing brand, the dang sauce, and the barbecue sauce, which has been selling like crazy on Amazon. Now, if we use a free Amazon tracker, we can figure out how many of these sauces they sell on average per month. The dang sauce comes out to 2,220, and they're currently selling for $16.99. This alone is grossing them over $37,000 per month. And let's not forget about their barbecue sauce, which is roughly 1,275 sauces per month. Now at $17.99 a pop, that's roughly $23,000 a month. 
The best part is the brothers don't have to lift a finger to run that business. It's all white label marketing. And what that means is all they have to do is promote it. They don't have to run any of the logistics, have any of the inventory, or even own the kitchen to cook the hot sauce. Basically, Hoff and Pepper, the hot sauce company, is allowing the Goon Squad brothers to put their company name and logo on their product and market it under their own name. Now, the brothers get the product for, let's say, a guess of $10 a hot sauce and sell it for $17. They keep the $7 profit with Without lifting a finger and the other ten dollars goes to the company to make it package it and ship it now the key difference is the goon squad brothers don't need to pay anything for the inventory up front because the hot sauce company will only label it and ship it when their orders sell lastly guys let's not forget about the sponsors that they get now throughout some of their videos you will see them spend a few minutes talking about their sponsor which can easily pay them over ten thousand dollars because of the size of their channel and they also have sponsors that send them free parts or tools for the current builds which allows them to save money on their production costs. It's all too often that I begin to see a pattern in successful entrepreneurs, and the Goon Squad brothers are the perfect example. They all have a talent for sales and marketing, and they all have a passion for creating their own business. Unfortunately, though, this is the end of the story for now, but I know there's a lot we'll see from the Goon Squad brothers. And with that being said, guys, make sure to subscribe and like the video if you haven't already. And if you want to see the video about how rebuilding supercars also made Matt Armstrong a millionaire, then make sure to check out the video right over here. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next episode. Peace.